What we're going to try to do in this video is approximate the area under the curve y is equal to x squared plus 1 between the intervals x is equal or between the interval x equals 1 and x equals 3 and we're going to approximate it by constructing four rectangles under the curve of equal width so let's first think about what those rectangles look like so four rectangles of equal width so look like that like that and like that and i haven't really defined the top of the rectangles just yet but let's think about what those widths have to be if they're going to be equal width and we can call that width delta x so this distance right over here we're going to call that delta x so delta x is going to have to be the total distance that we're traveling in x so we finish at 3 we start at 1 and we want four equal width rectangles so it's going to be equal to 1/2 so for example this first This first interval between the the boundary between the first rectangle and the second is going to be 1.5. Then we go one half to two. Then we go to 2.5, and then we go one half to three. Now let's think about how we'll define the height of the rectangles. For the sake of this video, we'll see in future videos that there's other ways of doing this. I'm going to use the left boundary of the rectangle to define the height, or the function, I should say. I'm going to use the function evaluated at the left boundary to define the height. So, for example. for the first rectangle this point right over here is f of 1 f of 1 and so i will say that that is the height of our first the height of our first rectangle then we go over here the left boundary of the second rectangle we're now looking at the function evaluated the function evaluated at 1.5 so that is f of 1.5 that's the height And so we get our second rectangle. Then we get, I could keep going like this. We get for this third rectangle, we have the function evaluated at 2. So we have the function evaluated at 2. So that's right over here. That's f of 2. And so then we get our third rectangle. And then finally we have our fourth rectangle, the function evaluated at 2.5. So the function evaluated at 2.5 is the height. So this is f of 2.5. Remember, in each of these, I am just looking at the left boundary of the rectangle and evaluating the function there to get the height of the rectangle. Now that I set it up in this way, what is the total approximate area using the sum of these rectangles? And clearly this isn't going to be a perfect approximation. I'm giving up on a bunch of area here. Let me see if I can color that in with a color that I have not used. So I'm giving up. I'm giving up this area. I'm giving up this area. I'm giving up that area. I'm giving up that area there. But this is just an approximation and maybe if I had many more rectangles, it would be a better it would be a better approximation. So let's figure out what the areas of each of the rectangles are. So the area of this first rectangle is going to be the height, which is f of 1, f of 1 times the base, which is delta x. The area of the second rectangle is going to be the height, which we already said is f of 1.5. f of 1.5 times the base, times delta x. The height of the third rectangle is going to be the function evaluated its left at le its left boundary so f of 2 so plus f of 2 times the base times delta x and then finally the area of the third rectangle is the function the height is the function evaluated at 2.5 so plus that's a different color than what I wanted to use let me I want to use that orange color so plus the function evaluated at 2.5 times the base this is going to be equal to our approximate area let me write, make it clear approximate approximate area under the curve just the sum of these rectangles so let's evaluate this so this is going to be equal to f of is going to be equal to the function evaluated at 1 1 squared plus 1 is just 2 so it's going to be 2 times 1/2 plus The function evaluated at 1.25, 1.25 squared is 2.25, and then you add 1 to it, it becomes 3.25. So plus 3.25 times 1 half, times 1 half, and then we have the function evaluated at 2. Well, 2 squared plus 1 is 5, so it's 5 times 1 half. 
And then finally, you had the function evaluated at 2.5. 2.5 squared is 6.25 times 1 half plus, or 6.25 plus 1, so that's 7.25, 7.25 times 1 half. And just to make the math simpler, we can factor out the 1 half. So this is going to be equal to, all right, 1 half in a neutral color, 1 half times 1 half times 2 plus 3.25 plus 3.25 plus 5 plus 5 plus 7.25 plus 7.25, which is equal to 1 half, 1 half times, let's see if I can do this in my head. 2 plus 5 is easy, that's 7. 3 plus 7 is 10, and then we have 0.25 plus 0.25, so it's going to be 10.5 plus 7 is 17.5. So 1 half times 17.5, which is equal to 8.75, which once again gives us an approximation. And clearly the way I've drawn it right over here, or the, for the function we're using, it's going to be an underestimate because we've given up all of that pink area that I had colored in before. It's an underestimate, but it's an approximation of the area under the curve. In the next few videos, we're going to try to generalize this to situations where we have an arbitrary function and we have an arbitrary number of rectangles. And we'll also start, in videos after that, we'll look at rectangles where we define the height not by the left boundary, but by the right boundary or by the midpoint. Or maybe we don't use rectangles at all. Maybe we might use things like trapezoids. Anyway, have fun.